Hi, this is Dimitri from Sigma One, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make image cards the right way in Bricks Builder. So to start with, the end result will be image cards like this. So on the page, I've already created a, a template, if you will, with a menu, logo, uh, and a background image. So first, we'll add another container. And we're going to give it a height of 75, minimum height of 75. We're going to add a little bit of padding. And we'll make it a dark background. Next, we're going to add another container inside. And you see it's sitting up at the top. So we'll go to the parent container. We'll center align it, and we'll also put it in the center horizontally. Inside this, I'll name it image card grid. Now let's assign a couple grid classes to it. If you guys are interested, I can make another tutorial on how to properly use grid in bricks. So we have grid, and we're going to want three columns. Gap of eight. Now, before I go too far, this looks a little big for me. So we'll go in and we're going to add a max width of yeah, because we don't need it that big. So now we're back at it. What we'll do, we'll add another container. And as you see, it automatically fits in one third because we gave it three columns. Now for this, we'll name it image card one. We're going to assign it a class of image box wrapper. Now you see this image box wrapper, we gave it a width of 100. And if we scroll down to the bottom in the CSS, we're targeting the root and we gave it a height of 45 rem. Next, but before I go next, I'll show you how a lot of people do it online, which is an improper way and it should never be done like this. And I'll show you why. What most people do, they go, they create a div, they add a background image because it's easy. We'll, we'll use the snowing Christmas trees. Boom, it's done. However, that's a poor way to do it. If you look at it, you're just really using the CSS background image property. It doesn't give you alt text. It doesn't do anything aside from just assign a background image. The way we're doing it is much better. So we'll drop that off. And then what we'll do is we'll add an image inside. Now this image, I'm going to assign it a class of image box image. And Let's pick an image. Now, the cool thing about this is we can also mix and match horizontal images and vertical image, and I'll show you. So I'll just pick this image first, and it fits in. We can pick retina devices you're supposed to do two times, so we'll do the 960. If you need other tutorials on proper image sizes, they're right here. So... With the image box image, we have the image, the layout, we make it with 100%, height 100%. And again, we scroll down to the CSS, and we're going to target the root element and give it a height of 100%. Now, to make them look nice, we'll add another container for an overlay. And we'll name this... Okay. 
And I already have a class for it, image box overlay. And it doesn't look like much, but I'll show you in a second. We absolutely positioned it. And because this one, the image card wrapper is relatively positioned, it fits within the confines of the parent element. So image box overlay, we absolutely positioned it with zero on top, right, bottom, left, and we gave it a Z index of one. Now we'll go down to the gradient overlay, apply to, we're gonna pick background, color one, I just made it fully transparent. In color two, I picked this dark blue color that matches the background, so it looks like the image fades to nothing. But I mean, you could do really whatever color you want. So now we have the image box overlay. Now we're gonna add one more div inside. And we'll call this the content wrapper. Add another class. And this one is image box underscore content. Again, I absolutely positioned it and I just added bottom of 5%. At the top, I just gave a padding of 5% on the right and 5% on the left, just so that the text never goes outside of that. We also gave it a Z index of two. So if you look, the last one, the overlay was one. Now this Z index is two. We'll go ahead and we'll add a heading into it. This heading, we'll call it part number one. Let's change the color to white. Good, right? No. Because for some reason, Bricks adds a couple extra divs and wrappers around the image. So even though we wanted to make the image 100%, this inner wrapper that Bricks adds doesn't take on any properties. So then what we have to do, we will add a code block and we'll get this code block right here. Click it. We want it to execute code. And we're going to put this in. Now what it says, image box image, which was the actual image, we want it to be 100% image box image now image box image forgive me it's very zoomed in image box image is the div wrapper that goes around image wrapper that goes around the image so we're going to take the image box image And we're going to find the direct image wrapper under it. Now, if you remove this, every image wrapper will have a height of 100%. And we may or may not want that. But we have to make it the direct descendant of this class. Now, again, if you look at it now, The image is there, but it's squished. It just doesn't work like that. So then we'll add the last part in, which is object fit cover. So instead of targeting all images, we want to target the image box image class, and then all image wrappers that are direct descendants of the image box image, and all images that are the direct descendant 
of image wrapper. And we're going to assign it object fit cover. Now you can see it's much better. Now the benefit over doing it the other way that I mentioned first is now you get to use all the responsive properties of bricks. So we can add a little bit of alt text. I get Yosemite in the morning. Now if we inspect it, you'll see we're not using the CSS background property anymore. Now, we can add alt text, and we're also using the source set property, which means that the image size will change depending on the screen resolution. So right now I tagged it as 960, so it will work for 960, and then it'll automatically scale down to the right image size depending on what the browser selects for it. Now by doing the background image property, it just doesn't work like that. But now you're wondering, why does it look weird on the back end. Again, I don't know why, but if you drop this code in, and run it, it'll work. Now what this is, I inspected the page on the Bricks back end and found all the elements in the dashboard that need to change to accommodate this. It doesn't change anything on the front end. It just helps you when you're looking at it on the back end. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the cool thing about it is you can mix and match image sizes. Previously, you would either have misshapen cards or distorted images, or you would have to go on Photoshop or Affinity or whatever and resize your images to be able to say, that's too much extra work. So we'll duplicate this. Image card two, let's change this. Image card two. Duplicate it again. Image card three. Image card three. So the first image we picked was horizontal. Let's pick a vertical image. Now I wanted to do that and I'll show you guys something interesting. And we'll pick another image. Uh, this one. Now you'll see this is hanging out under it. Now, if we add the overflow, it takes care of that. So let's go. And we're going to target the image box wrapper class. We'll do code and it works. Now as a little extra, let's add some hover effects to it. So let's change, let's make the image zoom in when you hover over anywhere on the wrapper. So we'll select the class image box image and I'll copy that for later. I don't know why it changes it like that every once in a while. We'll do. And because we'll be using the transform property, we'll make the transition apply to only that. We'll give it ease in out. Now this in and of itself won't do anything until we go here. And 
Adrian will do image box wrapper cover. Now, now you know what? I want to show you something. The bricks does have the pseudo selectors. So if we go to the image card one, and we'll do the hover. And we'll do image box. We don't want that. We want the image box image. It combines them. So we can't use that for right now. I already emailed support and asked them about it to see if it's a feature or a bug but we could add it into the style sheet pretty easily. So if we do image box wrapper hover, we'll do image box image, and we'll do transform scale one, run the code. You can see the images zoom in. We'll check it out on the front end. Now you can see they zoom in. It's still a little boring. So now what we'll do is we'll add another one. Image box wrapper hover. And we'll do image box content because that's but we have applied to this content wrapper. And again, we'll do, now we want it to translate up. We want it to move up, so we'll do translate Y, make it 25%. We want it to move up 25%. Now it jerks because we never added a, a transition to image card. So we'll select the class image box content and then we'll again target the root and we'll give it a transition of 0.3s. Again, we're targeting transform ease in out. Now I know you can create a class to do all this, but I'm just showing you how everything works under the hood. Now, when you hover over it, the image card moves up. And because, again, it's best practice to do something like this, assuming you probably want them to, to go somewhere, we're going to give it a, a link. We're going to make the whole box a link. And we can just link it to the Hello World post. And it's only applied to the first one. So you see on the bottom left, it's linking to that. And that's how you make image cards. So if you guys like this, let me know. If you hated it, post it in the comments. But if you want more tutorials on grids or whatever else, let me know and we can make it happen. Thank you.